All right, welcome back. Now we're going to talk about, we're still talking about global impact of computing, and now we're going to talk about citizen participation, how people can contribute to solutions of problems. So here's the interesting thing. There are many problems that are too big for one person to solve or one computer to solve, or that are too hard for computers to solve, and there's a role for people to play in the solution of those problems. Many of those, if you're going to have people contribute, you have to have the ability for that problem to distribute itself out to the people and then come back. So that, that problem has to scale. The solution has to scale to many people, and there has to be some mechanism to distribute work out and to get work back in somehow. Um, science has been impacted significantly by using citizen science. This, this is a new recent phrase. Um, although citizen science has been done for many, many years, but more reasonably, more recently, people have been using computers to supplement how they're helping with some problems. So some scientists might say, I need help with something, and the citizenry wakes up and helps. And that it might be turn their computer on, it might be being go out and send something. So this is a classic example they've always talked about citizen science is we need to see how many of this particular butterfly there are, and is it going extinct? But how do you do that? Butterflies are all around. So what they have done is they've elicited, they've solicited help from the community, from the, the, the area where the butterflies might be, and they say, we need people to go out there and count the butterflies they see. You know, just make a note or look at some birds. And every time you see one, you make a note. And then you submit that every day. You say, I was sitting at this location, looking in this area for this time, and this is how many I saw. And that count comes in to be a much more reliable than trying to send your team of grad students out to kind of to sample. Well, let, we're going to go to 10 random spots and count and then multiply that by the spots we're not at. That's not as accurate, because they might have happened to go, you yeah, might have sampling error. You might have had, happened to go to areas where they are or are not. That's called a sampling problem. So you have more people, more samples, more accurate results. Okay, so that's kind of cool. There are opportunities for people, for students and, and the, the world to use their idle computing cycles to solve some of the world problems. So I want to show you a really cool video from SETI at home, which is a, there's a snapshot here. And the idea is to use your computers to help look for extraterrestrial signals. Okay, so video now.